I will be talking to you on how to properly take your blood pressure. But first, I would like to acknowledge Grantham University for their financial support. All right, so one of the questions we wanna answer is why do I need to check my blood pressure at home? So if your doctor, your caregiver, suspects that you may have high blood pressure or hypertension, they would like for you to monitor your blood pressure at home. So there are a few, few reasons that we wanna do this, okay? We wanna do it uh, whether your blood pressure measures the same at home as it did in your doctor's office, okay? We wanna also measure how well your medications are working. There's a plethora of medications out there that the doctor can put you on depending on your age, your race, your hereditary, your cholesterol, lab work. So you wanna make sure that the medications that the doctor did order for you are working correctly. Changes in your blood pressure, for example, if it goes up or if it goes down. And people who check their blood pressure at home usually do better at keeping it low. When choosing a blood pressure meter, you would want to think about a couple different things. Okay, so cost, size, and how easy it is to use. So some devices cost a little bit more than others, but check with your insurance because they may be able to cover it. That way you won't have to come out of pocket at all. The size, it's very important to make sure that your, your blood pressure cuff fits your arm comfortably, okay? The doctor or nurse can help you with this, so you wanna make sure it's not too tight because it's gonna blow up or actually it's going to inflate, so you wanna make sure that you get a proper reading by it not being too overly um, small. And you wanna make sure that you understand on how to use the device, because all the blood pressure devices that you have, they come with instructions on how to use it and how to read the numbers. So when you're taking your blood pressure, you wanna make sure that you're sitting in a chair with your feet flat on the ground, no crossing your legs, no crossing your ankles. You wanna make sure that your back is to the back of the chair, and you also wanna make sure that your feet are properly flat on the floor. You wanna to try to breathe normally and stay calm, very important. You wanna attach the cuff to your arm. You wanna place it directly on your skin, not over your clothing. And it should be tight enough not to slip down, but not too uncomfortably tight or not too loose because we, don't, we wanna make sure that we have an accurate reading. So you wanna follow the directions that came in your device to start measuring, and it may involve squeezing a bulb, which there's another blood pressure method, or you can need to press a button to inflate the cuff. Now, one thing that's very important and that we wanna also let you know, that there are different types of ways that you can check your blood pressure, okay? So we have a couple of different ways, and I will give you a demonstration on how to do the one that's highly recommended by the American Heart Association. So first, we have the one that goes on the wrist. All right, so this one is not recommended by the American Heart Association. So if you happen to have one, see if you can check with your insurance company or speak with your doctor to make sure that you get one that is a little bit more accurate, okay? If you do, if you don't have anything, use it, okay? So how to use this one? So you wanna put it on your wrist, okay? Make sure you're following your directions. Okay, so this one you wanna place it over your heart. So before you press the start button, you wanna place it there because we don't wanna move because it might throw it off. And that's when you press the start button, you get comfortable, you breathe normally, okay? And once it deflates, you'll have your number. This one, this is the one that you have in nursing school. Everybody remembers that. But this is a manual one. If you have a home health nurse, she probably even has one of these right here. Now pink is my favorite color, so you don't have to go ahead and get a pink one. Okay, so this right here, you wanna make sure you have a really good stethoscope. You're gonna place this on your bicep. Make sure you have it lined up, okay? Now your blood pressure, when you're sitting down, you wanna make sure that your bicep is at the level of your heart, okay? Sometimes you'll go into the clinic and you'll say, put, they'll say, put your arm up here. No, no, no. You wanna make sure that it is level. Okay, now for this one right here, this one is the manual one, like I did say. You wanna make sure that it is lined up and with, depending on which one that you have, you will have whether it goes on the left arm, right arm, you wanna make sure the arrow matches up. Okay, this is the one that you inflate and deflate. Okay, and you wanna make sure that when you hear that, when you inflate it, when you 
deflating it slowly. You want to make sure that the first loud sound, you want to write that number down, and the last long, long, long sound, actually the heavy sound, or the loudest, <laughs> in other words, that is the last one you want to put. Okay. And then we have this one. Hi, and we're back. I'm Katina, and I have Miss Jeanette Williams here with me. I'm going to be taking her blood pressure. Hi, Miss Jeanette. I'm going to be taking your blood pressure today. Is it okay if I use your left arm? Yes. All right, so I've already washed my hands, and as you can see, we both have our masks on. All right, so I'll be using the blood pressure cuff that I mentioned before, okay? We don't need a stethoscope. Only thing we need is to make sure that it is operational. And you want to make sure that you're going by the directions that's included with the blood pressure cuff that you have. Okay? So again, Miss Jeanette, she is sitting in a chair and her back is fully to the back of the chair. And you can't see it, but her feet are flat on the floor. The ankles are not crossed, the legs are not crossed. Now, her arm parallel to her heart. So that is very important. We don't want to make sure it's not too high or too low. We want to make sure that we have an accurate reading. All right, so we're going to start. I've already washed my hands, sanitized my hands before I touched Miss Jeanette. She made sure I did it, okay? <laughs> so we want to start by putting the, it on the skin. Remember I said skin. It has to go on the skin. All right, so it has a notch. It should have a notch where you're going to be placing the blood pressure cuff. And we want to place it where we will have um, visibility or having it take it correctly. All right, so depends on which one you have. All right, nice and snug, not too tight, not too loose. And I'll let Miss Jeanette know, ma'am, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it uh, getting a little tight on you like I'm giving you a really big hug on your arm, okay? And you can relax this arm right here. All right, and just breathe naturally. And so I went on and hit my start button, and it's starting to inflate, okay? And now we're just gonna wait. I'll be waiting patiently, and she's gonna be quiet, and she's going to be waiting as well. So no small talk, we're just waiting. And so as we're waiting, the blood pressure cuff, it inflated, and now it's deflating. After it deflates, it's going to give us a number, and that's the number that's going to be our blood pressure. The top number is going to be systolic, and the bottom number is going to be your diastolic. Wow, she's a model patient. Look at this. Thank you, Miss Jeanette. Did you see it? All right, 132 over 81. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> And thank you so much to Miss Jeanette Williams for letting me take her blood pressure. And if you remember before, there's a scale and it shows high normal blood pressure. So you want to make sure that you are taking your blood pressure accurately and you have a, a really good visibility so you can be able to take it to your doctor. Again, I want to thank Grantham University for their financial support. And that concludes my class. Mm -hmm.